like that. And you were coming to this legendary Abbey Theatre. Now, the only thing I want to say about the bones is that I turned them all around. I put myself out of it, sitting near a reservoir, uh, flowing into uh, the Charles River in Boston, and getting rid of myself, because I was bored and sleepless and useless. And suddenly then, when I was there, I heard all these lovely voices around me. And I wrote them down, and in about four sleepless weeks, I had the privilege of writing down about 80 poems. And uh, so I ask you, please, and I remind you during it, to remember this, not me, it's not me that's talking. It's the title of each poem. And Neil Astley, the publisher, chose a poem which I'd like to begin with. It's Hope. Uh, I think I liked it for many reasons, but the voice of hope talking to me. And uh, I think it took me way back to childhood or boyhood. And I can't rem I remember the phrase, faith, hope, and charity. And I, I don't know what came before it or after it, but it was a lovely combination. And uh, one teacher used to say to us when we were writing our essays, remember now, what really matters is faith, hope, and clarity. <laughs> <laughs> so, here is hope, the voice of hope. Like lightning in dark skies, I love to brighten up dark lives and rid sad hearts of lonely cries. I have one fierce enemy, despair. All driven energy, forever there, rips hearts apart and doesn't care. I care. Let's walk together now. Help me to help, to grow and thrive, and let the future shine alive. Despair would murder it and make you guilty. Let's talk now as we walk and see the future, reaching out to you and me. Our skies are brightening up today. I love your company. Dear friend, and always will, come what may, I dream of being the living song. Everyone would love to sing. Impossible? No. That's me. Let's keep walking until both our hearts are singing. And uh, I'd like to go into uh, the idea of the person being talked to, to you and to me. And uh, the poem I want to read next is called uh, Lie, the Lie. I suppose at some stage in our life we've all told a lie. Uh, but the lie never got a chance to talk to us. Uh, and uh, so. Um, if I may, then I'll read this one. It's uh, the lie. I'm everywhere. I don't need to say that. Your man with the pen is up and at it. Politicians love me. <laughs> Oddly enough, so at times do lovers. So does almost everybody. I don't need to proclaim my universal presence. Call me whatever name you will. I'm a knife, a sword, a bullet, a smile, a sigh, a joke, a tear, a wink, a sweet, irresistible word. A silence of such style and skill. There's no knowing what I can twist, cripple, destroy, or kill. If I'm revealed, I'm usually denied. A matter of pride in the self that lie. And stop now, because you know, I know, you can't believe a word I say. <laughs> yet, yet, I say this, I'm used endlessly, and I never get tired. Only truth goes to sleep. Some stars and planets envy me. Better not have any truck with me. 
minds, tongues, lips are waiting. Why is this woman crying? Um, next one is called Proposal. It's a, uh, you know, well, men will talk to you about the way they propose to their wives now. Um, and the way they got accepted or refused. Uh, but this is in the voice again of the, the proposal. I would have proposed it, <laughs> When he put me to her, she refused to answer yes or no. Her indecisiveness made him feel a fool. So he spent five years in Colorado he returned, finding her still unmarried. So he put me to her once again. The same indecisiveness hit the man. He went to live in a village in Spain. <laughs> where he learned a language he grew to love, and in which he put me to a Spanish lady. Gracefully, she listened, looked at him, and smiled. The rest is family. <laughs> peace. And peace talking to, to me. Here you come, striding up that leafy street, looking for me. I'm here. Remember sitting under that tree in Pavia? We were together there, and I knew for an hour your happy love. Open your heart now. Let me enter it. I want to live in you for good. Begin again. Poem. I began the reading with hope, which was The letter I got to her in the week was from a 90-year-old woman who, at 88, got little cancer. And she said, someone gave me a poem called Begin, and then I heard you wrote it. And I want to tell you, I'm fine. <laughs> says, I, I read the last four lines every day, and I feel fine, she said. It was a beautiful letter. She described her whole life. 88 and then, and then she was happy. So may I read that for you and wish you all a happy beginning. Begin again to the caroling birds, to the sight of light at the window. Begin to the roar of morning traffic all along Pembroke Road. Every beginning is a promise, born in light and dying in dark. Determination and exaltation of springtime, flowering the way to work. Begin to the pageant of queuing girls, to the arrogant loneliness of swans in the canal, to bridges linking the past and future, old friends passing, though with us still. Begin to the loneliness that cannot end, since it, perhaps, is what makes us begin. Begin to wonder at unknown faces, at crying birds in the sudden rain, at branches stark in the willing sunlight, at seagulls foraging for bread, at couples sharing a sunny secret, alone together while making good. Though we live in a world that dreams of ending, that always seems about to give in, something, something that will not acknowledge conclusion, insists that we forever 